Welcome back to our channel everyone. Today, as the title shows, we have this 2018 Chevy Equinox. Uh, it has been, the car has been an accident from the other side and uh, because of that, both the roof airbags and the seat belts got deployed. Now in this video, we're only gonna show you how to remove the seat belts so we can replace them or send them in for repair. Uh, just a general idea with uh, GM, so Chevrolet GMC, uh, with airbag work, you do not have to take off the SLS module or SDM module or airbag module. Again, they have, they have so many names. The module, the airbag modules on GM vehicles, all of them are self-healing. So basically, once you replace the deployed airbags, seat belts, pretensioners, uh, anything that was deployed that has to do with the safety and restraint systems, the airbag module will reset by itself. All you have to do is take out the battery, plug it, like uh, disconnect the battery, connect it back in, and it should be good. Now, again, in this video, we're only gonna do the driver seat belt, uh, but it should be the same process whether it's the driver or the passenger. Now, unfortunately, whoever was driving this car when they had the accident did not have his seat belt on. So basically, the seat belt is locked in the locked position. So you cannot pull it, you, it, will, it does not go back, it does not open up. So let's drive straight into it so I can show you what I'm talking about and show you the step by step process and how to do this. All right, like always, the first step we do whenever we work and work with uh, airbags or replacing airbags or seat belts or anything, we do, we disconnect the uh, battery. And like always, we always disconnect the negative one. So negative terminal. So I'm gonna go ahead and loosen this. Okay, that's pretty loose. Then I'm gonna go ahead and grab my towel. We gotta make sure that it will not connect back to anything. So let me go ahead and remove this. And I'm gonna put this here, put that there. Now, to be honest with you, we might have to connect this again, so that way we can adjust the seat. But I just wanted to know that the first thing that we always do is disconnect the battery. So stay tuned, we're gonna dive straight into it. All right, so what I was talking to you guys about earlier was uh, the seat belt being locked. This is basically what locked is. I cannot pull it, I cannot release nothing, so the this would make our job harder. Reason why is because we're trying to remove the pretensioner and the seat belt, and the pretensioner being right there with the T45 or the T47 bolt right here is gonna make our job a little bit, the space is a little bit tight. That's the point I'm trying to get to. So I've done this quite a few times before, uh, especially on this car. So I've, you know, I found out a way that, you know, makes it, I think it's, it will be the easiest to remove the seat belt. So the first thing we're gonna go ahead and do is uh, I'm gonna try to adjust the seat to the forward position as much as possible. Now to do that, I know I just disconnected the battery, but uh, for the sake of this, just to get the seat to the front position, I, did, I went ahead and connected the battery again. So I'm gonna go ahead and try to push this as much as possible. And as you can see, it's not, it's not going any further. This is it. Uh, I don't wanna get it up or down. So what I'm gonna do now that I got this, if we look from the bottom here, we're gonna see a uh, that tab over there. Let me grab my flat head and I'm gonna try and remove this. Reason why is I'm trying, we're doing this is because I'm trying to remove the seat belt pretensioner first. And I believe it's a T25 inside. Yes, it is. Let me grab the tool. T25 would be, it should be this one here. I should have it ready. Okay. There we go. So there's a T25, I'm gonna go ahead and put the bolts here in the door panel so we don't lose them. And then we're gonna go ahead and push this to the back. To kinda, so we can have the space. The space is a little bit hard. Hmm. Okay, so the seat belt harness or the pretensioner harness is attached to this. I'm gonna try to go ahead and uh, just release it. There we go. Now I can try probably. There we go. Okay. Let me try to get it out. There's literally no space and the seat belt makes it so hard. So that as you can see, this piece over here, it grabs to the back of the seat. So when, whenever you put this back, you push this from the back to the front and then on the front it attaches over here with that T25 uh, uh, screw. So now that you got this off, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, disconnect the battery because we don't we don't need to remove we don't need to move the seat anymore. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect the battery and I'll show you what we're gonna do next. All right, we went ahead and disconnected the battery just like we did the first step. And now, basically, the idea 
whenever we remove the actual pretensioner, we will be able to move the seat back and forth, which will give us more space to be, to be able to access the entire seat belt. Always when we remove the seat belts, we remove the actual entire pillar, so the B pillar, so the top and the bottom. Now, uh, in order for us to remove the pretensioner, since we do not have a space for a normal socket, if you do have a stubby socket in that size, that will make your job a lot easier. Uh, if you don't, then you will have to remove this space. I do have a stubby socket, but for the sake uh, of the video, I know not, not everyone carries it. I'm going to go ahead and show you the other way of doing it if you just have a normal uh normal t45 or t47 which is you know the socket here like you know as you can see like there is not enough space to get the ratchet in so uh first thing we're gonna do basically the idea we're gonna go ahead and remove this uh panel over here and uh, the panel in the back reason why we remove this is that so we can release this panel here we i'm gonna try to remove it or like you know at least like push it up so that which will give me like more space to open that bolt so let's go ahead and start by this panel over here i'm just going to start and pulling on this actually while since we're here let me go ahead and remove the connector for the pretensioner there is a tab on the front this side here we go so basically this is how it is you have these two tabs you push them from the side and that will release the connector i'm going to go ahead and tuck this connector in so nobody steps on it or damages it and then i'm going to go ahead and try to remove the uh, let's see the weather strip there we go there we go so i can see the tabs underneath it i believe there's like about three tabs if i'm not mistaken Push on it. yep there's about three tabs now these are very easy to break uh, so i'm just a heads up using my clip remover there we go and this one here I believe they are like metal clips which is a stupid design if you ask me I don't know what's wrong with the plastic clips oh here we go we got them all without breaking them so these are the four uh, clips that held it these three to the body and this one to the actual uh, uh, pillar so I'm gonna go ahead and put this in the trunk of the car and we're gonna go ahead and uh, move on to the back. So let me get set up and I'll show you what we're gonna do next. Basically, we're just gonna remove the, this piece, but in the back seat. All right, so now we are at the uh, back trim over here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and remove the weather strip first. And then I'm gonna start with this corner here. Okay, this one should be easy, I believe. Now we just have to pull it slowly, like you don't have to extract a lot of force. And uh, from this side here, here we go. So that's it. And as I was telling you guys earlier, see what broke? That piece over here, they are very easy to break. Really easy to break. So, and I, don't, I have, I don't know, I do not know why they do such a design, so such a flimsy design, honestly. But uh, anyway, we still have one clip on each side. So one clip over here one clip over here so that should hold it in, in spot really well uh now that we remove the those two panels over here i'm gonna go ahead and remove the rest of the weather strip the reason why is because we're gonna already do airbag work over here if you see it and we will drop a video on this in this scenario there is like two airbags both uh, passenger and driver curtain airbags or roof airbags i am going to go ahead and drop a video for that later on but for now we want to go ahead and send the seat bus for repair that's why i'm doing the video first but uh now that i got the panel i'm gonna see if i can get if i can just push this a little bit i know there's like a few clips here so let me get seated over there and i'll show you what we're gonna do next all right so i grabbed my pick uh this scratched up a little bit i honestly you guys do not think there is a way you can get this out without scratching it or like having those small bends uh, the plastic the material is like super weird comparing to other cars and other vehicles i walked on regardless we got it off i used my uh, thin flat head and my pick to kind of push it from the top if you can see it over there now we need a seven millimeter to open that to get that bolt let me grab my extension make it easier okay seven millimeter bolt over here now i'm gonna go ahead and open this bolt and then after that we should be able to just uh, pull it from each side and that will give us the clearance 
to be able to remove this entire pillar. So stay tuned, we'll show you how we're gonna do that. All right, so we got the seven millimeter uh, bolt over there. We got it off and I put it in the driver uh, door panel, you know, so we don't lose it. Now, uh, we will not be able to remove this obviously because, you know, the seat belt is here. But my point earlier that I was trying to make is I wanna pull on this so that way this black plastic bottom frame would be released from it. So, which will give us the clearance to be able to actually remove it. So, I'm gonna go ahead and try my best to pull slowly and gently on this. So, I believe I got the first clip, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. There is, there should be another clip over there. So, what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect all the clips. The, well, not disconnect, but uh, I'm gonna go ahead and, uh, and clip everything that's on the, the bottom panel. I'm gonna try to raise it up or kind of like tilt it to this side or the other side. I'm guessing tilt it to the other side would be a lot easier and doable. So uh, let me get the camera from a different angle and I'll show you how we're gonna do this. All right, so the first clip is the one over here. So if you're looking at it from the, from the a little bit far, you can see that the first one over there, there's another one over here. And this is from the front, by the way. This is like I'm sitting in the driver by the driver's seat. There should be another one at the bottom right there. Uh, there we go. It's gonna be a little bit hard because the space is already tight and the tension, like the seat belt, so tense, it makes it hard to move anything. But I got the clips on the side. I'm gonna go from the back, from the back, and I'll show you how we're gonna do that. Remote, release the rest of the clips. All right. So the first clip on the back is gonna be right there. It's a little bit, it's very hard to get to, honestly. And uh, make sure you wear your gloves. There we go. Got the, got the first one out. The second one is gonna be right there. I think the second one is actually broken. Or is that? No, that's not it. That's for a harness. I'm guessing for the seat belt. Okay, got the last one. And I think I got all of them. There we go. Okay, now the hardest part would be getting this entire piece out. So what I'm trying, I'm gonna, what I'm gonna try to do is push it from the bottom towards the drive, towards the front and pull it from the front towards the back to kind of tilt it this way and get it out. So let me get from the from the other side and I'll show you how we're gonna do that. All right, so as you can see, I started pushing it from here, kind of pulling it on it from this side. The space is tight, so it's gonna get scratched up a little bit, but there is no other way. There is no other way around this like there is no other way you can do this without scratching anything because uh again the car has been in an accident and the deployed airbag and the seat belt makes it hard but as you can see we will always try to get it with as minimum scratches as possible which is what we just did now that we just got the bottom uh panel uh now this, this has given us much more clearance obviously i can grab my uh ratchet and be able to open this bolt more freely and this is size t50 so it's a 50 torque 50 uh screw so this usually have like thread lock on it so just be careful and you know i would not recommend using a power tool so what i'm gonna do right now i'm gonna go ahead remove this connect the battery move the seat belt out of the way uh, move the seat out of the way so i can get to the rest of the seat stay tuned i'll show you how we're gonna do that all right, so as you can see, we finally got the pretensioner out. We pushed the seat forward. Now, uh, in order for us to remove the seat belt from this panel, we have to take off the, obviously the pretensioner. So I believe there should be a screw inside that holds it. I'm gonna go ahead and try to open this. I don't know if you can see it or not, but that line over there. So I'm gonna try to see if I can get this. So you have two options, either scratches on this here or scratches on that, on there. Cause you can get this pretension out of there, but there's gonna be a lot of scratches. So just be careful in the process. I know uh, some people will not probably be happy with the scratches on their pretensioner, but again, if you wanna go the other way around, like the easy way out or like the other way, you can simply just, uh, you can simply just uh, buy new. Some people, they do not wanna buy new cause they are extremely expensive and they wanna fix it. So. I'm giving you the way to do that. There we go. There we go. It's a little bit hard to get there. But this is all just so that we can remove this piece over here. I'm gonna grab my other one. Okay. 
There you go, it's coming off now. And we got, huh, that's the uh, piece that we just removed. Basically, whenever you put it back, you just slide it in and you push it and it will kind of click back in with the clamps it has on each side. Now this is going to be, I believe, a T30. So let me grab my ratchet over here. And I'm gonna go ahead and remove the screw over here. Now, I would recommend you put this back when you're done. Like put the screw back on the pretensioner so that way like it does not get lost or anything. And if you're doing this like, if you haven't done this for a long time, Go ahead and take pictures throughout the entire process so that way you don't lose anything and uh or you don't forget how to put everything back where is that plastic piece okay here we go so i'm gonna put this over here like i said so that they do not we do not like you know lose anything when everything stays here here we go we got the pretensioner off now we're gonna go ahead and remove the actual seat belt before I got work on the side, I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect everything that's on here. We have the battery disconnected already. And uh, this is going to be a little bit of a pain. Reason why is because we have those type of, uh, those type of uh, uh, connectors or pigtails, which has a tab on the top, tab on the bottom. So we're gonna need two set of two hands. Well, I'm gonna need to use both my hands. That's what I mean. One to push the tab on top want to push the tab on the bottom i'm gonna go grab and go ahead and grab my pick and i'll get this one off on video so stay tuned all right so i got my pick and i have my flat head i'm gonna go ahead and uh, push this tab i already have the bottom tab pushed there we go it's a little bit hard i used my hook uh pick from the bottom and kind of got to it and pushed it again this is the same like the pretensioner it has these two tabs on the side they have to be pushed they have a spring on the back so it's not like that's something you push and it stays there so yeah and you have to push them both simultaneously in order for you to get it out now that i got it out i'm gonna go ahead and leave that inside there so it doesn't get damaged next <clears throat> we're gonna go ahead and remove the seat belt from the top so we already removed the seven millimeter bolt earlier we removed all the clips in the back and as you can see this is just gonna come off now this is just be careful with it as i said earlier scratches are inevitable uh when you are working on these kind of jobs here we go we got the upper part of the b uh, pillar off now we have a t should be a t50 <coughs> should have a 10 millimeter actually just a clip on the back so i'm gonna go all right, so all these bolts usually have thread lock on them. So as you see, I'm opening them like the first, turn slowly that one. And then we have the bottom one over here as well. Mm -hmm. Be careful. And it, I have no idea why, but this car has 25,000 miles. Yet, look at the uh, corrosion over there, even though this is like a part that's inside. The quality of the newer vehicle, honestly, is a shame how they make that. We still have to work on them though because those are you know that's what that's what we have in the market so i'm gonna go ahead and open this bolt upper bolt and i have the clip over here behind the seat belt which is right there behind the seat belt yeah which is what holds that and then you just slide that in this is what it is it has that clip it's it kind of just keeps the seat belt in place behind the pillar and uh and then we have a 10 millimeter in the bottom over here so i'm gonna go ahead and remove that 10 millimeter 10 millimeter these two t45 and that kind of sums it up so let me go ahead and do this i'll, I'll show you what we're gonna do next all right you guys that kind of sums it up uh we got the seat belt off customer said he's gonna send them in for repair so we're gonna get the car outside wait for them to be repaired and sent back to us so for us to be able to install them and uh stay tuned for the both roof airbag video we definitely gonna drop a video about that i'm personally excited for it and other than that i know i've made the video a little bit longer than you know a regular video for a uh, seat belt removal and replacement but i try to give you guys as many details as possible because there's a lot of things that could go wrong whether it's the seat belt that's tense and the seat that you cannot move or the pretensioner that almost like flew out of my hand when i was like opening the uh, 45 uh, the 50 uh, mil uh, torque screw which is another thing that i wanted to warn you about earlier but i forgot uh, so whenever you open that screw 
or whether on that whether you, whether you find a way to open it from the actual uh, tensioner or the other way around from the other side of the seat belt anytime you open a seat belt that's tense be careful uh, make sure you wear your headgear uh, and yeah that should uh, that should do it if you have any questions or any comments actually like or anything like you try to do this by yourself and you face some issues please hit us up you know uh, you can go ahead and uh, reach us through our Instagram message or leave a comment below and I'll be more than happy to help you out. Thank you for watching our video. Make sure you like and follow for more.